Donald Trump cannot go a single day without getting himself in more and more trouble. And I want to make sure you guys are filled in on all of the details. So we just got a bombshell new report showing that key Trump witnesses may have received significant financial benefits in the form of raises, in the form of severance packages, or new jobs entirely. This ProPublica report reads, nine witnesses in the criminal case against former President Donald Trump have received significant financial benefits including large raises from his campaign, severance packages, new jobs, and a grant of shares and cash from Trump's media company. The article continues, the benefits have flowed from Trump's businesses and campaign committees according to a ProPublica analysis of public disclosures, court records, and securities filings. One campaign aide had his average monthly pay double from $26,000 to $53,500. Another employee got a $2 million severance package barring him from voluntarily cooperating with law enforcement and one of the Trump campaign's top officials had her daughter hired onto the campaign staff where she is now the fourth highest paid employee and none of this stuff on its face is troublesome but the timing the timing of these raises these pay increases is what spells trouble so these pay increases and other legal benefits often came at delicate moments in the legal proceedings against Trump one aide who was given a plum position on the board of Trump's social media company, for example, got the seat after he was subpoenaed, but before he testified. Now I'm seeing why Donald Trump's attorneys sent ProPublica a cease and desist before they posted this article. Trump's lawyers did not want this information coming out. The article continues, significant changes to a staffer's work situation, such as bonuses, pay raises, firings, or promotions, can be evidence of a crime if they come outside the normal course of business. To prove witness tampering, prosecutors would need to show that Perks or punishments were intended to influence testimony. And everything coming out of this ProPublica report points to that right now, specifically the timing of these raises, because as ProPublica said, they came at key, critical moments during Trump's trials, and it's pretty clear they were trying to influence the testimony of these workers. The report continues, White-collar defense lawyers say the situation Trump finds himself in, and the dual role of defendant and boss of many of the people who are primary witnesses to his alleged crimes is not uncommon. Their standard advice is not to provide any unusual benefits or penalties to such employees. But Donald Trump, his campaign, his organization already did that. Ideally, decisions about employees slated to give evidence should be made by an independent body such as a board, not by the boss who is under investigation. But as we know, Donald Trump is a micromanager and likes to make a lot of these decisions unilaterally without taking the input of anybody else. Even if the perks were not intended to influence witnesses, they could prove troublesome for Trump in any future trials. Prosecutors can point to the benefits to undermine the credibility of those aides on the witness stand. Quote, it feels very shady, especially as you detect a pattern. I would worry about it having a corrupt influence. Barbara McQuaid, a former U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan, said after hearing from ProPublica about benefits provided to potential Trump witnesses. But McQuaid said, these cases are difficult to prove even if the intents were to actively influence testimony because savvy defendants don't explicitly attach strings to the benefits and would more likely be quote all wink and nod like you're a great loyal employee here's a raise they don't say that outright they say it with a wink and a nod so they have plausible deniability afterwards in response to questions from ProPublica a Trump campaign official said that any raises or other benefits provided to a witness were the result of their taking on more work due to the campaign or his legal cases heating up but the timing, the timing is still so suspect that it would have to line up so perfectly in each of these cases, and it just does not seem like a coincidence. The official added that Trump himself isn't involved in determining how much campaign staffers are paid, and that compensation is entirely delegated to the campaign's top leaders. Quote, the president is not involved in the decision-making process, the official said. Quote, I would argue Trump doesn't know what we're paid. Campaign spokesperson Stephen Chung said in a statement that, quote, the 2020 
2024 Trump campaign is the most well-run and professional operation in political history. Any false assertion that we're engaging in any type of behavior that may be regarded as tampering is absurd and completely fake. You guys have the most well-run and professional operation, yet you're running with somebody who is a 34-time convicted felon. You guys have also failed to open the necessary field offices in most key swing states, as President Biden has 50-plus field offices open across multiple key swing states. You guys have, what, maybe two or three, along with maybe five to ten campaign staffers, while President Biden has hundreds of them. This campaign has been a complete mess, but Stephen Chung, of course, is paid to say otherwise. Trump's attorney, David Warrington, sent ProPublica a cease and desist letter demanding this article not be published. Their letter warned if the outlet and its reporters, quote, continue their reckless campaign of defamation, President Trump will evaluate all legal remedies. But I'm not sure Trump is in the position to be bringing lawsuits to other people right now. He's kind of on defense, if you know what I mean. It's possible the benefits are more widespread. Payments from Trump campaign committees are disclosed publicly, but the finances of his campaign are mostly private, so raises, bonuses, and other payments from those entities are not typically discussed. And ProPublica even admits they did not find smoking gun evidence showing this was a top-down plot coming from Donald Trump, but they do echo my words about Trump being a micromanager. They say, ProPublica did not find evidence that Trump personally approved the pay increases or other benefits, but Trump famously keeps close watch over his operation and prides himself on penny pinching. One former aide compared working for the Trump org, his large company, to, quote, a small family business where every employee, quote, in some sense reports to Mr. Trump. Former aides have said Trump demands unwavering loyalty from his subordinates, even when their duties require independence. After his attorney general, Jeff Sessions, decided to recuse himself against then-President Trump's wishes, paving the way for a special counsel to investigate his campaign's ties to Russia, Trump fumed about being crossed. Quote, where's my Roy Cohen, Trump asked, referring to the notorious former aide to Senator Joseph McCarthy, who later served as Trump's faithful fixer long before Trump became president. And Trump claiming that people stabbed him in the back is really nothing new. This is a pattern we saw throughout his whole presidency where he'll claim in one breath that he picks the best people. And then in the next breath, he'll say that those best people stabbed him in the back because they aren't complete and total loyalists. ProPublica continues, attempts to exert undue influence on witnesses have been a repeated theme of Trump-related investigations and criminal cases over the years. Trump's former campaign manager and former campaign advisor were were convicted on federal witness tampering charges in 2018 and 19. The campaign advisor had told a witness to, quote, do a Frank Pentangeli, referencing a character in The Godfather Part Two who lies to a Senate committee investigating organized crime. Trump later pardoned both men in the waning days of his presidency, but it says in parentheses he did not pardon a co-defendant of the campaign manager who had cooperated with the government, only the people who did not cooperate. ProPublica gives a few more examples. During the congressional investigation into the storming of the Capitol on January 6, a former White House staffer testified that she got a call from a colleague the night before an interview with investigators. The colleague told her Trump's chief of staff, quote, wants me to let you know that he knows you're loyal and he knows you'll do the right thing tomorrow and that you're going to protect him and the boss. That sounds like witness tampering to me. A spokesperson for the chief of staff denied that he tried to influence testimony. Last year, Trump himself publicly discouraged a witness from testifying in the Georgia case. Trump posted on social media that he had read about a Georgia politician who, quote, will be testifying before the Fulton County grand jury. He shouldn't. So as you can see, Trump has shown a long pattern of tampering with witness testimony when it benefits him during a criminal investigation. If you think Donald Trump did it, let me know in the comments. I always love to hear from you. Otherwise, make sure you leave a like on the video, comment a blue heart, hit that subscribe button and have a great rest of your day.